I have some friends who are potentially gonna be in town next week. So I have seven days. I'm gonna do two batches of beer. And I'm gonna do them back to back. I'm gonna ferment in the kettle. And then once I'm done with that beer, I will keg it and we'll pitch another batch of beer on the slurry in the kettle, ferment it in the kettle as well. So at this point, I'm gonna pull it out of the kettle. I'm gonna put it in the um, bucket here and let it finish out. Now I'm going to harvest some yeast out of here uh, before cleaning the kettle out and heating up some water for my next batch. So I've just sterilized the jar here. I think I'm gonna just dump some liquid out of this kettle into it. So I'm gonna leave this hang out, probably just at room temp. And I probably will loosen the cap here as well. So this thing doesn't build up a ton of pressure. And then I'm gonna rinse this out and get some wort heated back up. There's some water heated back in and I'm gonna start my next batch. All right, kettle's clean and I'm filling it with water for my next batch. I'm gonna get the heat going for that. Mash at the same temperature, 160. I'm gonna mash it, this one at 158 actually. All right, uh, we're at 152, just maybe six more degrees and we're ready to mash it in. I still need to adjust water chemistry and grind the grains. The reason I have not done this yet is because uh, I took a nap. I'm really tired. I'm really tired today. My dog woke up twice last night to blast diarrhea all over my house. Um, so I need to do water chemistry here. Something really weird going on with our city water right now. I'll show you what this kettle looks like in a minute. It's bad. It's like the water is brown and cloudy. City officials say, yeah, it's fine to drink. And we just had a water main break and there's some uh, non-health threatening contaminants in there. Uh, eight of them didn't give us a list of what they were so I could decide for myself. But now it's like, well, what's this going to do to the beer? At the very least, it's going to make it look weird. I'm also wondering what it's going to do to the pH. We will see, I guess. Beer will probably taste fine. The water actually tastes perfectly normal. It just looks really bad. So I'm going to do the same water chemistry as I did the last time. Ooh, that's hot. Got our water chemistry adjusted here. Next thing I'm going to do is grind my grains, pop those in. I'm gonna lear I learned my lesson the last time by spilling grains everywhere. I'm gonna try to not do that this time. Okay, so I need 11 pounds. Oh, now we're starting to spill stuff. Puts us at 10. So, next, pop the basket in. So, I got my grains here. Stir it up, wait 10 minutes, take a pH reading, and then maybe do an adjustment and let it go another 15 minutes. All right, now we're, now we're cooking. Or mashing, really. Okay, timer's going off here. Uh, so it means I need to check my pH. We're right at 5.4, so I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna leave this, uh, I'm gonna let it ride. Alrighty, um, my timer just went off. Just gonna give this thing a little taste. Just to make sure it's sweet, it is. I'm gonna call that done, and I'll turn the pump off here. Pull the grains. All right, now I'm gonna kick this temperature up to, uh, this is set to manual and 100% of power. We'll get this up to a boil. I need to decide what kind of hops I'm gonna use for this next batch of beer here. Let's dig in the freezer and see what we have. I, you know what? I got eight ounces of Nelson. You know what, I think it's gonna be Nelson. It's the only if to do a single hop that I haven't used before. My alarm's going off, I'm, I'm almost at a boil. Uh, go ahead and put my hop basket in here. One ounce of hops at the top of the boil. Adding our one ounce. We're going to just 
crack the lid as I normally do. I'll go ahead and weigh out the hops for the next edition here. Four more ounces for the flame out. I'm gonna do it at flame out as opposed to trapping into 170 and doing a whirlpool. That didn't really work the last time. Oh shit. We're not even close. Ah! All right. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the hoses set up here. This, this is gonna be my water in right here. The boil is officially done, so I'm gonna circulate through here just to get the chiller and everything nice and hot. Everything gets sterilized. Then I'll cut the heat. Um, I'll add my hops and start chilling. So um, I'm done circulating, done with the boil, done circulating. I'm gonna turn the heat off, I'm gonna turn the cooling water on. So water's flowing to my chiller. Um, I'm going to add my flame out hops. This is four ounces of the Nelson. Now I'm gonna set an alarm. Last time I did not set an alarm and it kind of screwed me. Okay, I have my alarm set. Once this gets down into the mid 70s, it'll beep. I'll come back and we'll wrap it up. I do need to aerate this, uh, and I'm not gonna take it out of here to do so. I'm gonna use the spray valve to aerate. I'm gonna say we're done aerating. We're done with this hop stand. Go ahead and take this out. All right. Pop this on here. This is gonna be, excuse me, blow off, like a blow off tube. I have my yeast that I harvested from the bottom of the, the last batch there. I believe what I read on Brewlosophy, uh, you can just pitch right on the tube in an old batch and it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And then uh, again, this is a, a mixture of the Voss and the Hornendahl. Um, I'm guessing that the Voss is gonna do almost all of the work here because it works so fast. So we're, it's going in at about 73 degrees. I'm gonna set my temp here for, we're gonna do this one at say like 95, I think. I'm gonna just keep this within the temperature range for both yeasts since there's some horned doll. Last step before I clean up is pop my clips back on here and hopefully tomorrow this should be almost completely done. See you in like a couple days. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yeah. Mm. Mm -mm. So good. First things first, not the beer. This thing's 20 gallon kettle. This is a 240 volt controller. I use neither of these in this brew day. If this is June or July of 2019, this setup is live on Kickstarter. We're doing a pre-sale. Brand new system we're offering here. 20 gallons of fury, 240 volts of pure power. Now, back to the beer. So this is the second batch of three that I did with the Kvike yeast. Single hop, Nelson. We're calling this one Uncle Nelson in honor of my late Uncle Nelson. Tastes great. It's really like lemony. I think I like this one better than the last. I'm not getting a ton of hop aroma. I feel like I'm getting more of the Kvike yeast profile than I am the hops at this point. Still trying to dial in this Kvike yeast like quick IPA process. The problem is that if, if you ferment at a super high temperature, which I did, it, I feel like it just drives off too much of the hop aroma. You can't really call it an IPA at that point. So that's that, that's this beer. Check out the last video if you haven't seen it and stick around for the third video in this series where I actually will top crop yeast from the batch that fermented this beer. Literally just scooping yeast right off the top of it and putting it in another kettle. So. Uh, Check it out. Thanks for watching and check out our Kickstarter. Thanks. See ya.